गुरु कृपा के लोग नमस्ते वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सत्संग टूडे सतगुरु श्री मुझी जी की जय I just want to kind of, I'm not sure how to really put it in words, but I'll try and I just want to check something. Um, Is it audible? Can you come close? Okay. I feel like um, something's quite clear now, which is that um, I function as consciousness, let's say, in one of two ways, either uh, believing or non-believing, basically. And this belief has a kind of momentum of its own which comes and goes and is losing momentum you know so that's fine and when um, whenever there's a feeling of suffering um, it's like I, 
and clarity comes and then I always find myself checking like did anything actually happen to me um, and I can see that no like it didn't and And you remember a while ago, we spoke, quite a while ago, we spoke about this sort of feeling of like waiting for something. Mm -hmm. And um, and I feel sometimes like, um, even, even though what I just said I could say that seems to be like my highest truth that I can speak honestly mm. at the moment is that even when there is this identification nothing happens to me ultimately mm. and yet there's this kind of little little hesitation mm. or something almost like there's this feeling of waiting for my experience to somehow express that mm -hmm. not in terms of my behavior or anything like that but just in terms of like um, like an example that came to me this morning is if you're dreaming say you have a dream and then you wake up the moment you wake up you realize it was a dream but during the dream I feel like I keep waking up from dreams mm -hmm. and now I, there's this feeling like okay so what I'm waiting for is for even when I'm dreaming to always be conscious that it's a dream and I don't know if that's like a realistic expectation or not basically yeah. are you with me yeah um, and I just wanted to check because I feel like that's somewhere where there's a kind of a but hiding because it's like yes when I check I can see that I never I'm the unchanging I'm not, I'm not affected by that play of yes. belief and at the same time, even though most of the time I'm not actually suffering, still there's something that seems like a little bit unclear in those just day-to-day -day moments, mm -hmm. like maybe I'll be working on the computer and I'm not suffering anything. And if somebody comes and says like, or if uh, the thought comes like, okay, what, what's here now or who am I or something like that, there's clarity. But it's almost like I'm expecting the ongoing, constant recognition of that as an experience. Mm -hmm. And break it into two parts. Yeah. One is the constant experience of that. Mm. Yeah. The constant experience of that is a bit prior to the confirmation that this is how it always is. That is, is it? Mm. In the sense that when you say in my day-to-day -day life, these things are happening, my proposition is that you're not away from the experience of that mm. then. Mm. It is just that the confirmation comes when mm. you just check you know, what is real is. Because if it was really about the changing of the content of experience, you see, then it would be very different from what we are talking about. Then you have to possibly uh, get on a path to, to change a lot of things, to change the content and how it appears and work with your attention a lot, mm. these kind of things. Here what we are saying is that the checking is good because when you check, you see that the false is never there. Mm. You see? Just like I used to say this very often initially, where that if you had this idea that the sun comes out from the west, you see? then you check and see in the morning, no, it comes from the east. You then you check a few times, but you don't have to constantly keep checking. You see? Yeah. So your experience is always there. Yeah. You see? So the sun is always 
coming out from the East in your experience, our checking just confirms or invalidates the possibility of the false. Yeah. Okay. So don't have to wait for experience to change in any way. So there is really no waiting in any of this. Yeah. There is no difference that has to happen in the worldly play. And differences can happen or not. But that's not really what it is about. It is just like if you check and say, is the false true? And uh, as you keep checking a few times, then you see that it just never happens. So when the idea comes that maybe it can happen or it does happen, is it? that is the idea which used to get allegiance, but because you checked, is it? You know, I've heard this idea before, but I've checked. It's not <laughs> like a conversation like this, it's just in the inward feeling just stays open. Whereas earlier when the idea would come then something would latch on to it and by the idea of your limitation. So it is not really the, the content of the experience that has to change or any state which has to be modified. Mm. As I was saying yesterday also that whether you are experiencing complete openness and spaciousness or things seem to be at a mm. bit stuck. Either of that does not actually define you mm -hmm. in reality. So, as we, if you allow that to define us, if you allow that to define us, that this is me, I'm just stuck up at the moment, or this is me, I'm so cool, I'm so open right now, <laughs> like that, then we're defining still not the reality, the capital R reality. Mm -hmm. So, Although mm -hmm. even that definition and play with limitation is ultimately within the mm. big R reality. Mm. It never really goes from there. But you have a sense of what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> it's not in opposition. Nothing actually in opposition no. to the truth. No. Ever really. No. But, the, but what we are talking about in Satsang is just this game of how we delude ourselves and how we come out of delusion or play with deluding ourselves and play with coming out of delusion. Seems like because it's obviously a spiritual belief yeah. which has been nurtured maybe since I started coming to satsang yeah. that like okay so like here's the criteria for freedom and one of those is like this sort of you know that you I don't know thoughts don't arrive or whatever it is I can't even quantify it when I look for it but there's just some it's almost like until attention really goes on it, that belief kind of sh shifts and keeps moving around and suddenly it's like, okay, so what am I waiting for? What is the... F and then it's like, oh, la 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 la, something else or whatever. Um, so... The thing with that belief is that basically... Um, I don't have to wait for the truth to be true, yeah. like it's true now, yes. which means it was always true, yeah. even before I came to satsang, yeah. even in the middle of all this so-called suffering and yeah. every experience of this life and whatever else.
so it's just being fed this thing of waiting you know this idea of Self is not uh, an object in time, no. and uh, the one that seems to be an object in time actually doesn't have any reality. Mm. So, if there is an idea of waiting. Can see that it must be made up because uh, that would make the self an object in time. I have to wait for the self, or the self has to wait for the self, or the non existent one. Any way, which way you put it, it doesn't stand up to real inquiry because uh, it makes uh, that which is beyond time time bound. Mm. not speaking right now about the outward play of this body mind yeah. in which they can be mm. this appearance of maturing mm. or whatever is it or oscillation maturing, whatever you might call it all these appearances can come and go but we are not really speaking about that This can be fully allowed to unfold just as it is. But when we allow this to define me or I, then we are making picking up a version which is very convoluted. It's neither even this, it is not that, it is somewhere like a strange mix. What's that? In the sense that when we use the appearance or the changes in body mind to define that which is real, yeah. then we end up with a strange sort yeah, of cocktail, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is neither just body mind nor is it really mm. is it reality, just like we have this vague idea about ourselves. Mm. So but that's what happens when we define on the basis of mm. some appearance. Because we are not fully saying that this is me also. I am with this it conveys that I am like this, mm -hmm. okay. and that makes it very mm. strange. It's neither mm. tangible nor intangible. Mm. Mm. When we say, "Okay, this body still speaks angry words," mm. okay. therefore I must be mm. like this. Mm. Caught up. Then who are we actually defining? We're not even defining this body because to say <laughs> this body still speaks angry words. Define, define. It was fine. You see? Therefore, I must be. You see, belongs to who? That is not even this body. It is some strange idea we have. Yeah. It more. It's more. Seems to be like. Um, these 
just kind of embedded beliefs and so like the light of satsang is exposing them more and more and yet it's just like that groove seems to be quite well established in the mind so an example might be if I find myself in conversation with somebody and uh, I might not be believing things about them to the same extent that I did previously but yet still it's, there's just almost like an uh, almost like an automatic yeah. experiential assumption that like there's a separate being here kind of thing and um, and then maybe later I'll contemplate that and I'll realize like oh no there was just like God basically there was just being there so like now there's just you know but maybe when I came up I was feeling like okay I have to listen to an answer like what is he saying and, you know and then suddenly like it, when that clarity is there it's like oh no there's nothing like that here so it's more like this waiting it feels like waiting for these uh almost like waiting for experience to kind of cleanse itself of this residue of like belief and assumption um, not because it makes me suffer much but just because it's like uh, I don't know I just, I just feel drawn to it like I want to know what is it like to experience uh, with the eyes of God basically to see myself in ev in everything and then of course so then what happens is I contemplate okay so did I actually experience anything other than God and the answer is no yes. because well the answer is no yeah. when I check and can you see what I mean and yeah. so it, almost like that little gap exactly. between that yeah. is that just advice of mind yeah. or is that actually a genuine uh, longing seem to make out of us. Mm -hmm. So if you say, I'm just waiting to see through God's eyes, mm -hmm. <laughs> it makes us limited, makes us grasping, makes mm -hmm. make us clingy, it make, makes us in a rush. Mm -hmm. The content can be the same. Versus, I'm just waiting to see through God's eyes. Even 
better would be not to even worry about where it is coming from. Because mm-hmm. even this can be a, a spiritual mind saying, is this right or is this wrong? Is this true or is this false? And what's been happening in Satsang these days over the last few weeks is more and more we are looking at our spiritual concepts in a very good way, in a very open way.
can it be said that the sense of being a person or ego or the limited one is only because of the conclusions we make about life or ourselves or yes. people but even that would be a yeah. conclusion yeah, so have a sense of this yeah. so obviously after as I notice this so the first thought that comes is so now I have to, I I know as a one who doesn't make conclusions. <coughs> so after noticing this, that maybe the sense of a person is only because of the conclusions. Mm-hmm. The thought that comes or the offer on the okay. mind is to live as a one who now doesn't make, make a conclusion. Mm-hmm. And the offer for this position is also based on the conclusion that if I don't make a conclusion, then I, I'm not free. You know. No question, just... Yeah, this is like this. So, um, this confusion machine like you were looking at yesterday, is just like that. And you see that, ah, the mind itself is the cause of all of this problem. The mind itself can see it, is it? And now the a different set of conclusions has been replaced by such thing appropriate exactly. conclusions. Exactly. So like the entire spectrum and everything in between. So now that you see that both opposites, and it's very common, like if it is said in Satsang, don't go to the left, automatically the mind will offer a conclusion saying go to the right. That was not said, but it seems, and this is the nature of the mind, that if one assertion is false, then the opposite to is presumed to be true. And we get into this um, uh, sort of oscillation, oscillative play between this and that. But uh, what is beyond this uh, dualistic thought? And also like, uh, suppose you tell us to look at the made of distinction between inside, outside or anything. So then I see and I notice that yes, the distinction was made up. So there's that seeing and then there's that conclusion. the distinction was made uh, and then th- if I give too much assent to the conclusion exactly. then uh, the scene almost gets not gets replaced but more value is then is given to the conclusion than the scene yes. so, yes. so you build spiritual positions based on these kind of conclusions. <laughs> and I, even these take away our freshness and openness. So then 
pride or arrogance I, can come only if I attach to the conclusions. Mm-hmm. I cannot attach to the seeing. I can only attach to the conclusions I make based upon the seeing. Yes. And only that will then create But arrogance. But the conclusion actually lives up to the seeing itself. It's not a substitute for the seeing. Exactly. And nor does it describe it in any true way. Not in any true way. Yeah, only in a... Provisional. In a provisional way, yes. And also in a negation. Mm-hmm. Like uh, a conclusion can be like, yes, I see that there is no inside or outside. You mm-hmm. see? But it doesn't say anything about what is. It only describes what is not. Like there is no inside or outside. You see? Mm-hmm. But if you try to describe what is, then you see that words are not so eloquent. Even when we say unchanging, for example, we say it is not changing. But what is it doing? <laughs> It's not changing, we can see. So we can put a lot of uns or nons to describe what it is not. You see? But uh, but if you were to try and positively describe it, it's not so that straightforward because no description actually comes close to this or true to this. But the thing is that now, if we see this and we say okay, then you would feel if you saw if you felt that the mind is all that we have, if the mind is all that we have, then it would feel like. Just give up. You see? There's no chance because the mind cannot capture this in any true way. But is the mind all that we have? Mm-hmm. <laughs> At the moment, all I can see is conclusions being made. Yes, yes. That which sees mm-hmm. itself is that mind. Mm-hmm. No. but because i cannot see that in an objective way yes. so and i'm this is a very good point let's pause here for a moment so i see the mind but the eye that sees the mind i cannot see that in an objective way then how do we claim that i see the mind uh So is there a knowledge which is deeper than, than just our, or uh, independent of our objective experience? I feel more comfortable in saying just that the mind is seen, but I don't feel like I see the mind. Yeah, you can look at that. So if I say, you say the mind is seen, yeah. and I say, are you making the report on Govind's mm-hmm. behalf? No. Then who is... <laughs> See, I know, I know this uh, sort of dilemma because you can't say, really say I because you have no uh, perception of that. You, see? you can't say it's third party also. So this is a beautiful explorative territory. Like when we say, and in Advaita it's very popular to say it is seen mm. or um, uh, it is just perceived, you see. And uh, the intent there is to try and remove any sort of personal um, sense of either doership or personal perception from that picture, mm. you see. But but. It is not in that sense that, oh, it is seen, but I am not seeing it. That's not what you're saying. <laughs> Because uh, you can either, at this point, we can neither claim or deny hmm. that I am. I can neither claim nor deny that I am seeing it. I am seeing it, yeah. So, this is already very good because when we go beyond claim and denial, when we see that 
it's not possible in that way. Then we left this um, dualistic thought, at least on this aspect behind. So as we look at all aspects of time and space, of this appearance as you call it, and we see that you can't actually claim or deny any of it, <laughs> then uh, then uh, dualistic thought doesn't really have a way to grab a hold. You mean uh, we cannot make conclusion about exactly anything, anything in the appearance. We can't make a conclusion about, and that which is not an appearance, which is neither um, not coming and going, not uh, perceived, you see that we can't make a conclusion about anyway. <coughs> Feels like I'm so used to making objective reference. Yeah. So making the reference of myself as something which is not seen mm. is a bit unusual. Even that you don't have to do. The reference itself means limitations. So exactly. In a way, it is like habit breaking when masters say, "Look at that, which is the unchanging. You are that." You see, it is really to break this habit of making a reference to ourselves, which is limited or just uh, uh, objective. You see, but really, it is not so that you can continue to uh, make even this distinction. Is that once you break the habit of making a reference which is objective about yourself? Don't have to make any reference. Mm. And this is true openness. The openness that is spoken of in satsang is this. Mm. That I, which we've seen, can point anywhere in the entire spectrum of phenomenal to non phenomenal in a way. <laughs> it can seem to point in this entire this comedian eye can point. But what if no lo it no longer pointed to anything? The term I if it was divested of its reference making what would change? Because when you are stuck in notions, whether they are worldly or spiritual, okay, then there is it is just the sense of a worldly individual or a worldly limited, worldly limitation or a spiritual limitation. The spiritually who is what? Just that which is 
fed with all of these spiritual concepts and then we make a boundary about the I saying that only that which is spiritual applies to it. Spiritual conclusions. Spiritual conclusions are what it is made up of, the spiritual belief system. So any of this boundary making is not real actually. If there is fear arising, that automatically leads to a conclusion. Huh? Seems very intimate. Because what does that conclusion rest on? The idea that this is not good or this should not be what is happening. It's not spacious. Yes. Now the space which you are being pointed to, mm-hmm. is, it? is that space, does that spaciousness mean the absence of something, like if fear is not there then there is space or even the space in which fear is coming? Call that spaciousness. When uh, fear is arising in your space and you see that this space is actually untouched, you call that spaciousness. Just to have fun. <laughs> actually, any term gets us into any uh, self-definition, any idea that this is what it should be. Gets us caught up in limitation again. something uh, like from Guruji, I'm not 
everybody feels that there is something I is getting the big and out again so now what is it <laughs> what is the saying unaffected by all of this yeah so when this this fear comes then it seems to be affected so it is not it also is like that the space in which fear comes is it when it comes next you have to see how that is affected Where does the fear come? It comes uh, along with an image. No, where does it come? is it a different place compared to where joy comes Fear comes, you can see. How? <laughs> so that also you have to refer to the past. No, I mean. The sensation is less. <laughs> content of the experience might be even what you're hearing now is it what you're feeling uh um, where your thoughts are all of that is perceived where well. Is there any other space that you experience besides this one? It's 
not to the physical uh, space you are talking about. Yes. It's very hard to con <laughs> control <laughs> anything on that. Early Diwali today? All the firecrackers are going off every day. And all different varieties. <laughs> Trying not to laugh. If it's one, one anar is being hot. What is anar? It's a triangular flower pot. You know, it's a triangular thing, and you set it a fire on top in this whole. For some is wrong, the other one. Chakri. Chakri. For some is just boom. For some they are like praying for a quiet Diwali, so this is like... Diwali this year. Eco friendly. Eco friendly. All that speaking is insane. Yeah. Huh? It's insane and all that. It's insane. It's only insane. Sorry. <laughs> For him it's like uh, the firework goes off and he's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop, stop, don't light the fire. Then he's like, <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> In a way, it is like uh, whatever release is happening is happening, but uh, it's uh, fun to see how, like, you know, we verbalize our judgment about that. What am I doing? Stop! This is not here. Yeah, like this kind of thing. Instead of our ideas about what is good for 
came over her, which is completely with a very good intention, but it's still is uh, in a room of our judgment and understanding about what happening. But we don't know what is and what is right for other also. We don't know. It may be kind of hiding my own position to be in a certain way, but that what like feels right, you know, like I don't know. Mm -hmm. so. Worry because I feel like in this case at least most of them will be happy to admit that they don't know what's going on. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's not like complaint or something, yeah. but it's, it's uh, I would have done the same if somebody comes or I suggest others, but it's, it's still our idea and it feels like some way to justify, not justify, but it's mm -hmm. not even, you know, not in my hand. focus. Okay. It's fun today because uh, I was feeling like we've not had this kind of satsang for a long time. <laughs> all fireworks going on all sides. <laughs> it's been too quiet around here. No? Earlier, every other day we were like wondering, should we like pause the broadcast or keep it on? <laughs> We've not had those decisions for a long, long time. <laughs> it's fine. It's also a very good time for all of us to check on uh, what you've been hearing in satsang. Mm -hmm. To remain in the unborn, to remain in your notionless existence, to not make conclusions or judgments. said often that it's very easy in a cave for some even that is not very easy actually <laughs> but it can feel very easy in a cave where there's no noise no disturbance everything is quiet you, see? you can decide what you want to keep in your cave and what you don't want mm -hmm. but uh, notionlessness when it is full of fire in our appearances mm -hmm. This, uh, this would be something very beautiful. And you see how our self-image, our self-righteousness, uh, uh, our self-protecting uh, tendencies, they all come to the fore in these kind of situations. Really? Yeah, everything is getting a bit you know, shaken up, you see, from all sides, not um, just you, but from all sides, there's some teachers like that, and you see that uh, the mind will say this, like that, like this, like that, you see, this is a very good um, exploration time. We must not shy away from this, because life is just like this. This is, in fact, the kindergarten version of life. <laughs> you see, if you feel like you have some semblance of control over such an environment, you see, <laughs> then uh, it's the same fallacy that we carry in life also. Mm -hmm. So it's good sometimes for that to get shaken up and think that I came thinking it's going to be like this, I'm going to have a peaceful Diwali satsang or something like that. <laughs> yes. But life shows you a different thing. And like he was saying, it's not, it's uh, a good exploration for those uh, whose bodies are having these kind of reactions also. Because you, you're dealing with uh, judgments which are coming already saying, stop, stop, what are you doing, this is not right, are you just faking it, is this real, you know. All this will happen. 
and plus then you have to deal with the additional uh, ideas of what must others be thinking you know what will they think what is father thinking about this you see this kind of thing so openness is not just uh, lip service no openness is uh, also openness does not mean that uh, a sort of sheepishness is it i'm so open i'm going to just be a sheep <laughs> it's not like that it is taking no position is it and allowing whatever has to unfold through this expression to unfold because it is going to any way but without judgment so good sense it is good sense because uh, we get into a particular groove also like all of us get into a particular groove that it has to be this way or this way you know what i mean i'm saying that the change the shakiness is good if it just became like this every day then then that would need to be probably shaken up by some silence <laughs> you know or something like that i'm not saying that i'm not what is good is the fact that we can't conclude that we can't settle that it has to be like this or like that i'm not making a conclusion that okay this to happen every day is what i'm saying is good is it or something like that i'm not making a judgment on the content of the appearance i'm just saying that it's very good for it to keep changing so that we can't really conclude and say this is how this is supposed to be can be a conclusion like suppose fear is arising yeah. so then there can be self defining i am this yeah. actually fear and then is a conclusion and then there can be a like blind more blindly bought in conclusion that the sensation which arises was fear exactly yeah. that's what i think yeah. that because we've never experienced the same sensation to us mm-hmm. then even the conclusion that we know what it is is just an idea this we, we have some very broad terms like fear like joy is it like um, uh, anger is it like grief these are very broad terms really for like millions of subtleties <laughs> within them really. so as we leave it un defined as we leave it unturned then we are not hiding from what is appearing this is what i mean by open or naked in a sense sometimes i say don't fear the fear to start with you see it for what it is so once you make this conclusion that it is fear then we are no longer dealing with what is appearing but we are dealing with our concept of it because you bring your prior knowledge of okay to deal with fear this is what works for me this is what doesn't work you know this is what you must do fear is nothing it is just 
like the absence of love or something like we bring these definitions into it <laughs> whereas when you are just meeting it for what it is it's just what was appearing then it was empty of all the stale stuff we try to deal with the labels try to deal with the labels in a conceptual way you see just to get some egoic sense of control right like what is it the mind uh, plays in a way that uh, it is scared of losing control and then okay i know what this is this is fear i know what this is this is joy i know what this is this is anger and what works in my case with anger is <laughs> really that so what happened to that which was arising gone in the background somewhere already <laughs> some exploration on pain has been happening here in the last uh, week as most of you know okay. but the minute you label it pain then is like okay what is the best way for pain management this what uh, is it then the just the taste of that becomes stale in a way you see you just to taste it for what it is you see is very twisty even pain point but i feel like they few are actually assimilating what i'm saying where i'm saying that to face things openly to look at everything in this empty way completely is the best most open way to meet it to label it is an avoidance is it is it and yet uh, day after day almost every day i get a complaint that we sort of in avoidance <laughs> in avoidance of uh, some experience is it by by meeting it in this way it? now if it was and i wonder whether the message will get through this time if what i was saying was that you run away from what is being experienced is it so something is arising is it and i'm saying you run away from that experience and use some spiritual concept saying nothing has ever happened is it nothing has ever happened then that would be like an avoidance like a turn trying to force attention away from it and not look at it is it but what i'm saying is be with it completely head on it itself inherently does not have the label with it you see okay? but when you define it then you are not with it completely then you are with all your ideas about it and all your past experiences so so and uh, i started using this term a long time ago like don't advaita it away you see it's very strange that i am hearing it now like we just like advaita it away but uh, it is not like that advaita it away means to use a concept like nothing has ever happened to come into a conceptual denial of what is being experienced stay with this experience fully don't uh, run away from anything but that presumption that i know what this is 
is only bringing past baggage into it you see which is like which is a which is a way in which you avoid the experience by by defining what you think it is the idea that meeting life in this way completely open and naked is somewhere contrary to our humanity or our humanness is just strange because the most human of expression is to meet life in this way but if human is another term for egoic or personal and we're just trying to change terms so that we can make excuses for egotism then i cannot uh, you see cannot uh, bless that in a way is a term that is used as a guise for specialness for arrogance for individuality humanity must be to meet everything that is appearing in this manifest experience with openness non judgmental But if the term "I am only human" after all actually is translating into "I am an ego" after all, then I can't let you rest there. Or I am a person after all. So as as we read. At the time, it is this term which um, <coughs> has to be clarified.
other tendency to form tendency is to form conclusion wherever here spiritual advice we form a technique to solve my problems and that is a limitation good and then we go the other way round <laughs> saying we should not form technique exactly the mind only fathoms these opposites and not forming a technique also becomes a technique very good if i avoid both these ways then i am the same as i was before that is caught up with identification see now this we can explore a bit like if you avoid i have to fix it or i can't fix it like i have to do this technique to become free uh, and there is no technique and that technique that is my new ploy to fix it by saying that there is no technique see now empty of either of these positions how are you uh, caught up in identification because these are what you identify with without this spectrum of opposites is it there is nothing to identify with everything that we identify with has an opposite even these words if you just identify with them literally then it is just another identification so how does one get out of this it seems like there is no way out is what you saying actually without getting into this dualistic thinking there is no way in to the problem is it the only way in to the problem is through dualistic thinking and uh, this hap- this is because naturally you are out you are not in is it naturally you are out of identification if you presume it the other way around then it can seem like trouble if you presume that your natural state is that you are stuck in identification and now neither technique or no technique is working you see then it would be trouble actually where are you identified it is just not true this present moment is so pristine you are fresh as a baby is it and you start thinking about this then it might seem like it becomes stale to expose the immense fear that of felt to expose the immense fear of that person here felt in body which concludes and doesn't know what will happen and what to do now made the wrong decisions which is lived in devotion to the master is very beautiful because and we have the master in our heart there is no actual thing as wrong decision and sometimes when it even feels like oh i did not have the master in my heart and i made this sort of mental egoic decisions and these were wrong decisions even to bring that to the master is is more than enough is it the master's grace is broad enough to take care of all of these so called decisions to go left or right that we seem to make
this surrender is pristine, very, very beautifully innocent. So don't have to worry about what was passed, just surrender it to Guruji in your heart. How to get over the urge to do something? How to get over the urge to do something? And consciously we always try to jump to some technique. How can one be free of that tendency? Yes, this uh, habit to try and solve it, fix it, use a technique to come to where we want to come to. Is habitual, yes, and satsang is the best uh, antidote. As you uh, just quietly sit in satsang, follow along as much as uh, you feel is natural, you will see that these tendencies, these conditions, these addictions to taking positions to try and fix things will become lighter and lighter. If you come to satsang with an attitude of openness, of letting go, of surrendering, Shanti's birthday today also. Happy birthday, my dear. Thank you all so much for being in Satsang today. Sadhguru Shri Muji Baba Ki Jai Sadhguru Shri Aranta Ji Ki Jai Guru Kripa Ki Vajayana